In this video, we'll begin the discussion of improper integrals, talking about what they are and what we can do to try to evaluate these strange looking integral objects. So everything we've dealt with so far that has involved integrals has been areas or volumes or things like that of bounded regions. So if I have a curve or two curves, I have you know this region in here, I wanna find the area of this region, I set that up via an integral. But another question you may wanna ask, and we'll see why this is important later on down the line, what about unbounded regions? What about regions that I can't put sort of inside a box? They stretch too far away. They stretch off to infinity in some way. Can I also talk about their areas and volumes? And the answer turns out to be yes, and that's how we get improper integrals. You might think of it weird, the fact that an area, sort of a region that goes off to infinity might have an area you can actually compute. But if it's getting really skinny really, really fast, you might end up with a fine amount of area inside there, even though it stretches to infinity. And that's the sort of situation we're talking about here. So there's two main types of improper integrals, and it basically depends on how the region goes to infinity. It either can go to infinity by the bound of the integral going to infinity, or by the function going to infinity. And for the first of these, we're talking about a region that looks something like this. If I have my axes like this, I can take a curve that looks like this, and I could want to find the area of this region here that goes all the way out to infinity. Will it exist? I don't know, but that's what we're trying to figure out using this sort of problem here. And generally you'd write these as something like the integral from two with an infinity as the upper limit. That's how we notate this situation of some function. That's one way for a region to go to infinity that we might be able to calculate via integral. A second way was when the function itself goes to infinity. And that picture is something like this. I'll have my function that sort of comes in this way say to about here, and I want to find this area where this function has an asymptote at that line. So this is one and this is three for the sake of this picture. This will look like a normal integral. However, the fact that this function blows up at one causes this integral to be improper. Improper meaning it's not a normal bounded region area that we're used to computing, but it's improper because it's something worse than that. Now, how can we think about calculating these guys? We'll talk about later. The issue here is one of convergence or divergence, which you might recognize being words we used before talking about limits, and that's not a coincidence. The idea for both of these is that if I didn't actually have this problematic point, if I didn't have my integral actually going to infinity, it went to some finite number instead, say I cut this off somewhere, I can find the area to the left of that orange line. That's not a problem. That's a normal integral that I can do. Then I want to say, well, if I move it further out, I can do the same thing further out can still do the same thing. So what happens is I send this orange line off to infinity. Do I get a nice area or do I not? And that's the difference of a convergent or divergent improper integral. What happens as this cutoff point goes to infinity? For the other type of improper integral, we want to do the exact same thing, but now we can't really use infinity as our sort of target point. We have to use the asymptote as our target point. So I'm gonna cut this off somewhere before one, if I cut it off before one, that's a nice, well-defined integral. I can find that, no big deal. And I can say, well, what if I get closer to one? What if I get closer and closer and closer to one, what happens? So here it's what happens when the cutoff point goes to the asymptote. In both cases, the idea here is basically the same. I have a problem with this integral. Let me get rid of it and make it a good integral and then limit my sort of parameter point to this problematic area and see what happens. And this leads to talking about what we mean by convergence or divergence of integrals. So we'll talk specifically about the two different types in future videos, but for now we'll talk about sort of in general. So the general idea is make a cutoff point and then limit the cutoff point to where there's a problem. This problematic point being either infinity or an asymptote of the function. If this limit exists, then we say the improper integral converges. And if it doesn't exist, then we say this improper integral diverges. And so those become our main questions about these improper integrals. Do they converge? Do they diverge? And if they converge, can I evaluate them? Can I find what the area is? And these are two separate questions. The question of what is the value of this integral may not be as easy as the question of does this integral converge? And we'll see that with some of the examples later on but we want to figure out if they converge or diverge, and then if we can, to evaluate them to get their number out of it. 
that's the idea of improper integrals. We'll see these two cases in the next videos and then look at how we can try to evaluate these integrals or determine if they converge or diverge in a variety of cases.